everybody. Right, it's the uh, aftermath of the Nottingham Pipe Club. We had the uh, 11th meeting last night. A damn big turnout as well. I mean, over t over 22. I mean, I'm sure there was three people on the way out that I didn't count. So probably 25 people last night. A damn good night had by everybody as well. Didn't see too many people walking upset. A couple of people came to join us. Non-pipe smokers, very interested. Hopefully we can get a few more people into it. Right. The most important thing in the Nottingham Pipe Clubs is tobaccos. This is actually a pipe club tobacco, but I'll get onto that in a moment. Okay. Um we had six tobaccos on offer last night. I've got quite I've got more here to show you today. So um one of the most popular tobaccos from last night was Gareth and Hogus Ultimum. With the disappearance of Optimum in the UK, this is probably the best alternative. Um, it's made by Gareth and Hogus. It's uh, an American style aromatic, so it's a lot, a lot damper and a lot moister than Optimum. Um, smokes quite nice. I had it in my uh, my improvised Mission Church Warden. Such a sweet tobacco taste of cherry and caramel, a beautiful, beautiful blend. Up next, um, a bit of Gower Falcon Flake. Now, this tobacco was beautiful. All the characteristics of, good, of a good Balkan, but in a nice slow burning cool flake form. Didn't take much, just folded and packed inside my my favourite Latakia burner. My uh, Dunhill, my Dunhill shell briar. I love this pipe. Only used for Latakia though. Uh, following that, there was some uh, Peterson's three peas. Um, quite difficult cutting this up into even twelve and a half gram pieces. Some of the box weighed forty-seven grams. Some weighed fifty grams. So it was kind of a lucky dip for the few people that tried it. I opted to go for it in my uh, in my Parker Canadian. Uh, this originally was kind of a sandblast rustic finish and it's all now been sanded down. Um, I need to apply some more polish to it, it's getting a bit dull again, but I'll just keep keep on adding the polish, keep adding the polish. The three peas was nice, I did struggle to keep it lit, but it was uh, a damn nice tobacco, not as strong as as people make you think, but no, it was still a a nice, hearty, full-flavoured smoke. Up next, uh, we had um, some more of bullseye, which I was smoking for a while when we couldn't get Deluxe Navy rolls. For those of you who've never seen it before, and are wondering why it's called bullseye, and if you can see that, there's your answer. It's a it's a Virginia Cavendish mixture. Um, with a core of black cavendish, it's a Virginia Perique mixture, sorry, with a core of black cavendish in the middle. It's a very, very nice smoke. But um, the Dunhill Deluxe Navy Rolls, it's got there's just something about that. I just love it. So, Orlix, uh, Orlix Bullseye. Uh, quite a few people took it. Didn't really get much feedback off people on that one. It was so busy last night, I, for the first two hours, I felt like I was just running around and didn't really get a chance to smoke a lot of anything. The other pipe club tobacco we took, which I haven't tried, um, is McBaron's Loose Vanilla Cream, which I think you should be able to just see that there. Um, comprised mainly of a kind of gold, golden orange Cavendish or Burley, uh, sorry Virginia or Burley with Cavendish in there, but there is quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of broken flake. The casing on it's beautiful. Oh, it's, uh, Got a strong, strong vanilla aroma to it. Um, again, I didn't get any feedback on this one. Um, I was sat with a bunch of non-aromatic smokers, so it's uh, didn't really get to hear what people thought of that one. And that leaves us with the last tobacco. The 
McClintock's Creme de Cassis, which I'll make making this morning. And um, I wasn't really expecting much with this tobacco. Uh, looking at the looking at the cut and the moisture of it, I was expecting it to be a little bit hot. It's got kind of a a very alcohol-based black currant sort of aroma to it. And those same flavours come across in the taste. It is a little bit hot, but then again I am smoking it in quite a small Dr. Pump Statesman. But for an aromatic of this consistency, it's a very nice smoke. Kind of, you get more of a lingering. You get the black currant more on the kind of, it lingers there in the background sort of thing afterwards. The initial hit is kind of creamy, but then the black currants there in the aftertaste, it's got such a such a good finish on it. But no, it's a, it's a very nice tobacco. Not one that I say I've ever really pushed with people, never really suggested to anybody, but after I've tried it, it's definitely worth a try. If you like your light aromatics, if you like a lot of what Peterson do, this McClintock's is right up your street. Right, um, there's uh, Optimum is disappearing from our shelves in the UK. Um, while I'm thinking about McClintock's on the subject of the Candy Cassis, uh, if you're looking for a slight, slightly damper but similar style to the Optimum, go for McClintock's Black Magic. Comes in a 50 gram tin. It's a very, very, very nice tobacco. Still got that kind of rum, vanilla, Christmas cake, Christmas pudding sort of taste to it. I'm sure, it's quite a nice, quite a nice alternative. But give it a try if you see if you're searching for something. If you want something a little bit sweeter and a little bit more powerful, Gauss Ultimum is a good one to go for. Right. One of our fellow Pipe Club members, Will, um, works for a company who makes miniatures, little models and things like that. Um, it's for him and a friend, Rob. Now, we've been toying with the idea of maybe making some tampers. And we've... Uh, we finally gone ahead with it, and uh, and this is the Nottingham Pipe Club Tamper. Being from Nottingham, obviously Robin Hood's our he's our, he's our logo. Quite a lot of uh, my tobaccos I'm going to be making in the future are all Robin Hood themed. I mean, I don't know if you can see him there. I'm going to upload some pictures of him in a moment. But he's done an absolutely cracking job. Um, seven or eight Pipe Club members managed to get hold of one yesterday. There wasn't many made. Um, there was some more coming out soon. We should be available both, both through the pipe club and through the shop. But I'm gobsmacked. It's my own little Robin Hood tamper. So he's going to sit. He's going to sit pride of place. I mean, they've just been gravity cast. He's done a cracking job of them. It's unbelievable. So I've still not met you yet, Rob. But you're a legend, matey. I absolutely, absolutely love these. <coughs> Right, um, a few other, a few other little bits and bobs I've been, uh, I've been dabbling at just lately. Um, big thanks to BC Richardson. I checked out the, uh, the old Paris. I absolutely love the stuff. I still find it a little bit hard to put my finger on exactly what the aroma is. <coughs> it's very, very pleasant stuff. I um even handed it around a pipe club last night and it's gone down a tree. <coughs> people who had never tried snuff before enjoyed it. Even a couple of other people like myself who are not generally a fan of perfumed and scented, ar um, scented snuffs prefer just sort of like dark plain SPs, that kind of thing. Even, even they agreed that this is one of the nicest snuffs they've ever taken. So BC Richardson, again, I thank you. Um, a couple of guys in the shop rave about it as well but uh, it, it takes four or five people to try and convince me to try something. There's so many different things I need to try. It's uh, trying to find the time to do them all. So, um, yeah, the old Paris. 
is an absolutely beautiful snuff. If you've got the chance to pick some up, get some. You won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed at all. Right, um, there was one, just one last thing. Next month is the uh, 12 month anniversary of the, uh, of the Pipe Club. Um, so we're thinking maybe about having a bit of a bit of a pipe smoking competition. Not for money, no prizes or anything like that. Just 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 for giggles, sort of thing. If any pipe club members are interested and would like to take part, let me know. If we get I don't know five, six of us, seven or eight of us, sort of thing interested, I can get in touch with a few people, get us some nice uh, some nice little six inch six inch clays. Um, as far as tobacco goes, this is where it could get quite interesting. Um, we need something that's going to appeal to an aromatic smoker and a non-aromatic smoker because it's got to be the same tobacco so it's going to be four grams of an unknown tobacco I'm thinking it might I might at a push actually go for new prints it's um, it's only a subtle aromatic sort of thing it's not full of Cavendish, it's not heavily cased it's kind of a it, it's just a nice golden mixture with a bit of maple on it really um, a little bit like the Ashton's Gold Rush, but not as complex. A little bit sweeter. But no, I think I think we will be going for that. Uh, there was one other tobacco that I smoked last night. Not actually a pipe. Not a not a tobacco provided by us. It was um, Robin kindly gifted me a, a bowl full of Ashton's Celebrated Sovereign mixture. It was a little bit dry, I mean it's not available anymore so I understand that he's, uh, he's hanging on to it and it's very very precious to him. But um, it was a little bit dry, it took quite a bit of quite a bit of packing sort of thing to get it in there, to get it um, compacted down and burning nice and cool but God was that a nice tobacco. So much Latakia. It was I always felt like I was smoking almost neat Latakia. The Virginia in there and the Cavendish in there give it a nice sweet background to it. But I absolutely love that tobacco. So if any of you ever come across any of Ashton's Celebrated Sovereign Mixture, get it while you can. Um, it's a great tobacco. In probably, to be honest, one of the nicest, one of the nicest like Scottish Scottish Latakia type mixtures I've ever smoked. It was a damn good tobacco. So I say, if you do get a chance to pick some up anywhere, just uh, just uh, grab some while you can, because it's, when it's well, it's pretty much finished now anyway. So uh, you can them up with the odd tobacconist somewhere, got the odd tin kicking around at the back of the shelf that they've lost or something. I don't know. These things happen, trust me. Um, but no. So yeah. So thanks again to everybody who came on to the pipe club. I was actually gobsmacked this morning when I looked at how many people have subscribed up to my subscribed to my uh, channel. Thank you all ever so much. I'd like to go through your names, but there's just too many of them. Um, I'll just pick a couple of them. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I've got Mr. Smoke Guy. Mm. Simple Smoker and Mr. Simon Garrett. I thank you both. All oh, in fact, thank you all for signing up to my uh, signing up to my channel. And big thanks to AIDS Pipes for his uh, for his mention we've got there. Right, okay, I think that about covers everything. Um, I might be back again later on this afternoon. I've uh, woken up a little bit more. I um, don't quite know what I'm going to do a video on yet. Possibly going to do a, a little piece on the IMCO, the IMCO Classic Petrol Lighter. It's a, a great lighter, so I might be back in a bit to tell you a little bit more about this lighter. How to take it apart, how to service it, how to change all the parts, how all the moving parts work and things like that. So right, okay, I'll catch you all in a bit. And uh, again, thank you all very much for watching, and thanks to everybody for subscribing. Okay, oh, and it wouldn't be a video without me saying, anybody want to do a tobacco trade? Please. Thank you.